Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Edusite Live Lectures. Friends, today in chemistry we will be talking about exploring material chemistry. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. Amit Kumar. Dr. Kumar is assistant professor in department of chemistry in Dal Singh College University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you so much. First of all, I wish very good afternoon to all the viewers. Dear friends, uh, today we have chosen the uh, title of our talk is Exploring Material Chemistry. Basically, material chemistry is an important area of chemical research and uh, based on the research findings of material chemistry, it helps to design various products and processes for use by mankind. So therefore, as this is an important area of uh, chemical research. So, today it is time to bring about some exposure to material chemistry. So, we have chosen the topic matter today called exploring material chemistry. Let us see what we are going to talk about. If you remember, a question when comes to our mind what is matter? Before coming over to what is material chemistry, we should understand this question, the answer to the question what is matter? Everything we all know that matter is uh, matter means everything that uh, occupies uh, space that is it has volume and has mass. So therefore, now further the fact of matter is that uh, all matter which we see around every every aspect of each and every product which occupies volume, which has mass, basically can be classified as matter. So, it means every object around us is made up of matter. And we all know that matter has three physical states in which it aggregates, that is liquids, gases and solids. And it is important to note that matter is composed of chemical elements or of compounds made from those elements. Now, having discussed the matter, now a question comes what actually is a material or in other words what are materials? We have come to know what is matter, but the question is is there any difference between matter and materials? In order to answer this question, we must understand what actually is a material. Basically, materials are generally considered as a class of matter. It means Materials are also the ones which has mass which occupies space that is they have volume also. So, it means matter is a class of uh, material is a class of matter with specific with specified characteristic uh, physical and uh, chemical properties. So, it means if any particular matter we are talking about and it has some specified unique physical and chemical properties. By virtue of having these properties, this matter can be classified as materials. For example, for example, iron is a material, steel is a material, stainless steel is again a material, wood is again a material. So, all these things have their unique physical and chemical properties on the basis of which these one of these species can be can be uh, dis, can be made distinctly uh, can be distinguished from that of the other. Having said this, it is important to note that material can be can be natural or can be man made. And to, until today, it is no wonder to specify there are about 3 million different types of materials are available. And as a material scientist, scientists create a number of such materials with their different physical properties by combining by looking for new ways for combining materials and 
then in that situation the number become almost infinite. So, therefore, the next question is why materials are important for us? If we want to answer this question, we must understand that if we consider from just the humble poly bag which we carry out usually in everyday routine work, from that humble poly bag to the most modern state of the art mobile telephones, all these gadgets or every object which is which we see around is basically made up of different types of materials. It could be polymeric material, it could be it could be metallic material, it could be uh, it could be plastic material, it could be uh, it could be uh, natural cotton material or things like that. So it means lot of advances are required in this research area that is particularly with reference to material science and therefore advances in material science represent important area of industrial revolution important industrial revolution of 20th century why because we because we cannot now imagine our life without uh, all such most modern state of the art mobile file telephones gadgets to each and everything which we have got habitual now of. So, since we cannot imagine our life without them it means they are mandatory and they are so much now part of our everyday life that, that, that it is impossible to imagine life without them and so therefore, it is important to carry out constant research in material sciences and particularly the material chemistry. Now, having said this, material chemistry spans various, various areas. For example, medicine and health care, we need different kind of materials like we need to look for constant, need to be looking for constantly new medicines, health care products. Some advanced material for designing various products and processes then energy and sustainable development, we need energy. So, we certainly need certain more new materials which can tap renewable sources of energy or natural sources of energy and environment remediation processes also require certain kind of material chemistry aspect. So, having said this now, it is now term to uh, turn to understand what is basically what kind of materials we can talk about. The materials can be many, inorganic material and organic material we can generally classify the materials as. Two very important classes of class of materials that is polymeric materials and nanomaterials are nowadays are in talk. So, our basic reference to this talk, our, our this talk, this lecture refers mainly to the nanomaterials. So, the all science or the science of such materials is termed as nano science and the technology which emerges out of out of the uh, out of the all the principles underlying principles out of nano science that is called nanotechnology. So, now this whole whole aspect of nano science and nanotechnology started with just one talk of a person who is now known as now called as father of nanotechnology and his name is Richard Feynman. In his famous talk in 1959 which he gave in American Physics Society as a lecture he gave this talk and he said there is lot of plenty of room at the bottom. What he actually wanted to convey as an essence of the talk was that he wanted to say that if it is possible to write the whole all the volumes of Britannica encyclopedia over a top of a pin. We can design such materials, we can design such processes using which we can just write all the volumes of Britannica encyclopedia over our top head of a pin. That is where he was talking about nano materials. So, this whole, whole science started with that idea which he tried, which he floated in that year. Now, let us have a look at what actually is a nano science. Nano science is the study of phenomena and manipulation of materials at atomic and molecular scales, where properties differ significantly from those 
at a large scale. What I mean to say is that if we compare the uh, physical properties of a nanomaterial means materials which is of the which is of the size of 1 to 100 nanometer their physical properties even if the even if the uh, qualitative nature even if the chemical composition of the material has been the same compared to its bulk bulk particles which have size greater than this range then there will be marked difference between material at the nano scale and beyond that scale. So, nano scale is basically uh, much 1 to 100 nanometer. So, it means any 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 chemical species or any material if we are talking about if the size of constituent particles lies between 1 to 100 uh, 1 to 100 nanometer then we can say the material is termed as nanomaterial. Having said this, now let us appreciate different, different aspects of, of uh, this scale. You can see if we, if we look at the water molecule, the size of one water molecule is of the order of 0.1 nanometer. If compared to this, if we compare the size of a glucose molecule, then we get to know that its size would be of the order of 1 nanometer size. And if we compare it with size of the antibodies in our human system, then its size comes out to be about 10 nanometer. And this scale, this, this scale which has been lying from 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer basically is termed as nano scale. And viruses are having the size of the order of 100 nanometer and you can see bacteria having the size of 1000 nanometers uh, whereas a cancerous cell uh, has uh, the size in between 10000 to 40000 nanometers. If we compare it with that of a normal cell then its size would turn out to be around 7000 to 8000 nanometers. Having uh, appreciated having tried to see what is the size of various different uh, uh, various different chemical species or biological species. Now, let us have a look at how big is a nano or how small is a nano if we call it this way then it would be better. Well, uh, a sheet of paper if we talk about then the sheet of paper is about 1 lakh nanometers thick. So, you can now imagine the thickness of a sheet of paper which we normally use its thickness is 1 lakh nanometers and the strand of human DNA one single strand of human DNA is having the width of 2.5 nanometers. That is the diameter of the helical coil structure DNA strand that is of the order of 2.5 nanometer. And you can now imagine if we compare a 1 inch of a length one inch of a length would be having 25 crores 4 lakh nanometers. Not only that a single gold atom is about th one third of a nanometer in diameter and one nanometer is as long as your fingernails grow in about one second. And now it is very important to understand the thickness of human hair then you can imagine the size of a nanomaterial. The thickness of a human hair is 80,000 to 1 lakh nanometers that is its thickness that is of human hair we are talking about. We can have a look at what way in pictorial diagram you can see this is the bigger one basically represents a size of a human hair. And if we compare this size of a human hair with that of a nano fibers nanofibers which is having the size the diameter size which is ranging between 1 to 100 nanometer now you can think of what kind of materials we are talking about. We are talking about such materials which are so small that they would be about 10,000 time lesser in width compared to the size of a human hair. So, now you would be having an appreciation of what actually would be the size of a nanomaterial. 
Now, having said this, a nanomaterial we can now define is an object that has at least one dimension in the nanometer scale. What we mean to say this is that every object of is a three dimensional object like for example, a ball, a dais, any object which we see around except for sheet of paper which is a two dimensional uh, object. So, we can imagine. So, therefore, every object has three dimensions in a three dimensional space and if it occupies its size it's, it is having its size of the order of 1 to 100 nanometer in at least one dimension then we can say that the material is a nanomaterial. Now, having said this now we can we would like to uh, have a look at uh, the different dimensions of a nanomaterial. Nanomaterials if all three dimensions are less than 100 nanometers in size then that material would be called as either nano particle, quantum dot, nano shells, nano rings, nano capsules etcetera. If suppose we have a sphere whose radius lies in between uh, whose diameter lies in between 1 to 100 nanometer then it would be called as nano particle. Quantum dot is basically is a class of nano particles with a, with, a, with a specific quality that their size ranges from 1 to 5 nanometer beyond that it would be called just on the just the nano particles nano shells rings micro capsules just you can in the example you can just imagine the point object in three dimensions having all three dimensions uh, where in all three dimensions the size of the material is less than 100 nanometer now let us talk about two dimensional nano material two dimensional nano material is classified as nanotubes, nano fibers or nano wires. Tubes means it is just like it means a, a material which is a tube like that is it is a cylindrical in form inside it is hollow and it is just having the diameter of the outer circle as the outer periphery uh, which lies in between the 1 to 100 uh, nanometers. However, however, its length can go even beyond 100 nanometers. So, then in that situation two dimensional nano material would be called nanotube, nanofiber, nanowires. Now, what about one dimensional nano material? It means there are two dimensions which would be which would be beyond which would be having the size which would be lying bit beyond 100 nanometer, but there will be one dimension which would be having its size less than 100 nanometer. So, such material can be classified as films, layers or coatings. Suppose, we have a glass sheet, big glass sheet on which we deposit a film of some chemical species which is with the thickness of less than 100 nanometer just 4, 5 molecules layer rich. So, it means such a material then called then is called one dimensional nano material and called nano film nano layer or nano coating. Okay. Now, the question arises is there any difference between bulk material and nano materials? Bulk material means bulk material means the size of the particles or 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 constituent particles would be much greater than 100 nanometer or would be having its size in at least micro dimensions micrometer range. So, bulk material thus such materials are called bulk materials and bulk material possess continuous macroscopic physical properties. And the same aspect applies to micron size materials the grain of sand for example. Now, the fact of matter is that if we compare the bulk material versus nano materials the same material we, we can say that we are talking about gold at the nano scale gold can have properties optical, mechanical, electrical, mechanical hardness and catalytic properties etcetera which would be very different from the properties of the same material gold for example, which exist at the nano scale or the bulk macro scale. 
we would like to have an appreciation of this difference little later in our talk. Okay. So, bulk material versus nano material it means at nano dimension the laws of classical physics does not apply. What applies is the laws of quantum mechanics actually prevails there and this uh, app applicability then leads to quantum confinement of subatomic particles. And this basically leads to the profound difference in the in the in all the physical and chemical properties which a material has compared to bulk material. So, having said this when we say that at nano size the the uh, the properties of uh, the substances basically is governed by laws of quantum mechanics because quantum mechanics principle apply on such materials. How come we would like to have a little appreciation of it? Suppose for example, suppose for example, we consider a piece of metal, metal wire, copper wire we have all we all have uh, wiring in our houses. So, in that wiring copper wires are used that 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 uh, that dimensions of the material which we use copper wire is in is lies in the bulk material category because uh, the diameter of the wire would be 1 mm thick 1 millimeter thick so which is much beyond micrometer so therefore we this means it means all these wires are made up of as as bulk material now the fact of matter is if we compare a single copper atom if we compare a single copper atom with that of bulk material, if we want to understand and appreciate what way the a nano material behaves, then we should first of all come try to understand basically the what way the uh, electronic structure of a single copper atom is different from that of a bulk copper material. Basically, if you uh, have a look at electronic structure, there are various energy levels which are occupied. So, these are discrete energy levels, but when when in a bulk material you can say in a wire or in a or in a block of metal or in a strip of metal there are enormous number of copper atoms which are which are joined one to one. And we call it a electron C pool model of a metallic structure what happens is the copper ions which exist at definite crystal uh, crystal uh, in a definite crystal pattern at fixed lattice site and there is a pool of mobile electrons which is around them this is electron C model of a metallic structure. Basically what happens that each co copper atom has its own electronic configuration that is the various of energy levels in which the filling of electrons takes place. The fact of matter is when one single copper uh, uh, atom comes in contact with the uh, with the number of copper atoms in within the bulk then its electronic structure interactions of electronic structures electronic energy levels occurs between electronic levels of all copper atoms and this leads to formation of a of a continuous region of energy levels that is called that are, that is called band and there are two different kind of bands usually occurs basically one is in every material in every such uh, condensed phase solid material one is called uh, valence band and one is called conduction band depending upon in which uh, one is uh, filled and one is unfilled and the one which is filled it could be partially filled it could be completely filled and if there is a uh, huge difference of energy which lies between uh, valence band and conduction band then that material can be classified as an insulator when they do overlap then it is called uh, it is called a, a, a conductor electrical conductor. Now all these materials if you see copper is looks brown in color basically the color theory says that if any material if any material absorbs in one region then it would reflect all other complementary colors and would look like the one the complementary wavelengths. For example, if suppose some uh, substance uh, some substance absorbs light the white light the blue region of white light then it would appear red because of whip gear violet indigo 
blue, green, yellow, orange, red. If it absorbs in uh, violet region, it would or blue region, it would appear red. If it absorbs in red region, it would appear violet. So, this is the complementary color theory which predicts the color of any substance. So, having said this same argument applies here basically the, the whole electronic structure all this color appearance occurs or absorption of light occurs because there are there are migrations of electronic migrations of electrons from one state to that of the other and therefore in whatever the region there occurs absorption complementary color it to reflect. So, therefore, so therefore uh, a copper wire which it looks brown if if we now if we now keep on keep on cutting the copper wire in small pieces and we keep on doing so and ultimately reach to a state where we crush it in a, such a fine powdery kind of a substance where each such constituent particle is having the size of or the diameter of 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer then would be called a non nanoparticle and its all physical and chemical properties will change. So, we shall talk about it in the next section. Thank you. Once again, uh, let us in this session we start with our uh, uh, discussion of how the electronic structures get different from those of, uh, of nanomaterials from that of bulk materials. So, basically we should understand that there are interactions of electronic levels of uh, each and every atom in a copper wire for example, in a, which is uh, each every copper atom is having in its vicinity a large number of copper atoms. So, each uh, electronic levels of each copper atom go to interact to form rather than discrete uh, levels to the bands. So, it means a continuous structure is evolved. So, therefore, in that structure the, the absorption of light uh, would be different because the difference of energy levels where the electronic movement can be achieved is different. Now, if we compare keep on cutting the copper wire and in small pieces then finally, break it into such small pieces the particles which are of the order of 1 to 100 nanometer in that situation the interaction because the number of copper atoms would be much small in that small nanoparticle compared to that its bulk in, uh, uh, material. So, that interaction between uh, uh, now the interaction of energy levels would be between less number of particles compared to bulk particles. So, therefore, now the now the electronic movement would be restricted since the electronic movement would be restricted. So, it means there will be absorption of energy at different uh, levels and it means different amount of energy would be absorbed corresponding to that different amount of energy different wavelength would be there different wavelength would be there then it would absorb in different region and it would look or appear differently. It means a copper copper bulk material which looks brown in color would appear golden yellow when its size comes to around uh, between 1 to uh, 100 nanometers. So, therefore, this point I was wanted to convey that this occurs this change in physical properties occurs because of 
quantum confinement effect one thing. This is just one area. Because of quantum confinement effect, the optical properties of the materials do varies. That is, the, the absorption of different wavelengths in which a material falls that varies and then its appearance would appearance would also be different compared to the bulk material. We would see it little later when we go for the preparation of copper nanomaterial copper nanoparticles we would see and we would see over here how copper nanomaterial looks like it looks absolutely golden yellow in color anyway. Now basically the fact of matter is it means as the size is an important factor of a crystal. If the size of a crystal falls between 1 to 100 nanometer then its properties the optical properties all other physical properties would be very different from that of bulk material. Now the, there is a further in, uh, important uh, aspect of this variation is that if the size of crystallite is between 10 to 20 nanometer then its physical properties would be again be different from that of the same composition of material or crystals which are of the order of 60 to 80 nanometers. What I am trying to say is as size varies, size of the crystal varies between 1 to 100 nanometers the physical properties also varies and therefore and therefore it means we by controlling the size of the crystals within the nano scale we can design certain materials with different physical properties that's very important to understand gold gold we all know gold looks absolutely yellow bright yellow in color is and is also called yellow metal but the gold nanoparticles can look either red or can look violet green also we would also like to see with an example in little later so basically what i want to say is that due to quantum confinement effect that is due to interaction of different level of interaction of of uh, electronic levels that is called due to quantum confinement effect the optical properties varies right what other effects also are observed so this this effect we can observe have a look at this that colloidal solution of gold nanoparticles you can see there are different shades of red and thereafter there is different shades of violet so it means gold which looks yellow in the bulk matter would would appear red or would appear violet also when we make colloidal solution of gold nanoparticles at different diameters within nanoscale 1 to 100 nanometer. Now, so size and optical properties of gold nanoparticles can be put to practical use. Nanoscale gold particles selectively accumulate in tumors where they can enable both precise imaging and targeted laser destruction of tumor by means the avoiding harm harming healthy cell without harming healthy cell they can target basically what is the idea behind that is gold nanoparticles because of their size they can reach to only because in the in the cancerous tumor cells the gap between the cells is greater of the order of of the order of about 40 to 100 nanometers. So, therefore, we can design such gold nanoparticles which can load the drugs and can go to where between those cells which are of tumor cells and there they, they can release those functionalized medication and can bring about chemotherapeutic action also there only in those cells which are which are not good ones that is cancerous cells. Having said this now, there are other aspects to the uh, nanomaterials also. Nano crystalline crystallites are also influenced apart from quantum confinement effect. There is another important uh, aspect of uh, nano crystals that is their large surface area. We can appreciate uh, by looking at just one example how the large surface area of, of nanoparticles actually is there. We can now imagine 
वन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब साइज क्यूब दैट इज ए क्यूब विच हैज लेंथ ब्रेथ एंड वेट हाइट ऑल वन सेंटीमीटर इन साइज दैट इज अ साइज वी यूजली लुक फॉर इन आर प्ले दाइस नाउ इफ इट्स वॉट वुड बी इट सरफेस एरिया दैट मीन्स द एरिया विच इज एक्सपोज टू एटमोसफेयर सो देर फोर देर आर सिक्स फेसिस ऑफ अ क्यूब ईच फेस हैज वन सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर ऑफ सरफेस एरिया दैट इज दिस मच सरफेस इज एक्सपोज टू एटमोसफेयर सो देर फोर सिक्स सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर इज द सरफेस एरिया ऑफ ए मेटीरियल विच है विच हैज वन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब क्यूबिक इन नेचर which has its dimension of 1 cm cube now imagine that big 1 cm cube size material is cut into small small cubes with each having with each having the size of the order of 1 mm so it means if we now cut the 1 cm cube cube sized cube material into 1000 millimeter sized cubes now the area of each face of that small cube is 6 millimeter square the total surface area of that small 1 millimeter cube cubic substance so therefore total surface area if we compare it would be calculated as they because there are 1000 millimeter sized cubes which come from a 1 centimeter sized cube so therefore we can say because there is 6 mm square is the area of each mm size cube so there there is there are 1000 mm size cube so therefore the total surface area is 60 cm square it means if we cut the 1 cm size the cube into 1000 mm size the cubes then the surface area increases tenfold from 6 cm square to 60 cm square now if we cut the whole 1 cm sized cube in in small small cubes having dimension of 1 nanometer length 1 nanometer breadth 1 nanometer height then there will be there will be such 10 raised to the power 21 nanometer sized cubes and if we calculate the surface area each cube has the has surface area 6 nanometer square and there are 10 raised to the power 21 such nanometer sized cubes each has surface area 6 nanometer square then total surface area comes to comes to 6 6 crores square centimeter that is you can think of this area as you can compare this is about 1/3 1/3 of a football field in just 1 cm 1 cm3 size material if we if we break in uh, nanometer size cubes then it can expose a one third of a football field now you can imagine how much increase in surface area actually occurs right having said this we should understand what are the consequences what are the changes which comes as a result of large surface area large surface area makes exceptional catalyst systems in chemistry we all know catalyst works by adsorption of reactant chemical species on its surface and then allows a alternate path for reaction with a lower activation barrier and hence increases the rate of a reaction so for a catalyst to work effectively it is required that its surface area is greater so it means if we add in a reaction system a material which is having which is which is uh, a catalyst material which is having its crystal size in the bulk uh, phase then it would not be acting as that much efficient catalyst compared to when it is crushed and it is prepared in a nanometer sized particle and then when such material is added in our reaction system then it would be it would enhance the rate of reaction much more greatly compared to compared to a bulk phase catalyst so therefore this area has picked up recently and nano catalysis is been the buzzword these days in chemical research now it also makes nano material nano sized 
membranes and material ideal ones for water treatment and desalination. Basically what we are talking about is that if we want to, we want to treat water uh, water uh, which emerge as uh, as uh, as waste water which emerge from household from any other uh, space where utility of water is there so in order to treat that water we can also employ such nanomaterials because of their greater surface area they will they will bring about greater adsorption of the effluents on such surfaces and can then help in treatment of waste water so, this is another aspect of application of these na the nanomaterials. Now, there is another aspect be be beyond quantum confinement and uh, there is we have learned there is quantum confinement, there is large surface area uh, as property of nanomaterial. Now, there is another property that is called uh, that is presence of significant number of surface atoms. You see what happens if we talk about a bulk phase copper for example. In that bulk phase copper uh, around each copper atom in within the bulk there is a coordination of that atom would be a fixed one. That is we can say it is surrounded suppose for example, one atom is surrounded by six car, uh, 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 other copper atoms. Then if we compare the situation the compare it with that of the copper atom which is present at the surface it would not be surrounded by uh, 6 such uh, copper atoms then its coordination low number would be lesser. It means low coordinated atoms would be there on the surface. It means when we increase the surface area that is if we compare the bulk material with that of a nano material we have seen we have considered that we have seen obviously that as we go to nano scale the surface area increases it when the surface area increases it means the coordination number of the surface atoms because the atoms which it are present at the surface in a nano material is much more greater it means high uncoordinated sites are highly uncoordinated sites are available in a nano material. Now, this actually leads to adsorption of various chemical species onto the surface because they can establish some force of interaction between the species coming as uh, as the one which can adsorb and on the adsorb bent. So, therefore, because of presence of significant number of surface atoms it helps support functionalization of nanoscale material surfaces for drug delivery. What we mean by saying is that if suppose some drug is there we want to let it reach some particular site then what we can do is because of high uncoordinated un sites at the surface of nano material size objects we, we, we can expose such nano material with that of drug molecule then there can be an establishment of force of interaction between the drug molecule and the and the nano material and it can get attached to the nano material and therefore, such a process called functionalization and when a nano material is functionalized because of its size it can reach to only a particular site within a within a within a living being where you want to let this medicine reach. So, therefore, that is how you can let uh, the medicine reach to that particular site and therefore, we are now talking about uh, drug delivery system you which we using the by you virtue of use of nanomaterials. Right, nanocrystal slides are also influenced by large change in thermodynamic properties that is melting temperature depression occurs. Why what I want to say is that if you compare the uh, copper wire with that of copper nanoparticles the melting temperature of copper nanoparticles would be would be much lower compared to copper uh, which is present in the uh, in the copper wire. Why so? Because greater the coordination of constituent particles between them greater is the size of crystallite greater is the forces of interaction which do operate. So, in order to bring about phase change you need to supply greater amount of thermal energy in order to bring about change in uh, in order to bring the transformation of phase from solid phase to liquid phase. 
because of higher enthalpy of uh, enthalpy of uh, uh, <coughs> fusion. If we compare uh, this bulk material with that of nano material, since there is coordination number is lower because there are lot of carb copper atoms which are available at the surface, they are low coordinated. So, it means they require less energy in order to bring to the liquid state because they are loosely bound. So, that is why all nano materials has lower melting point compared to their bulk phase. Now, this, you, this property you can make use of in order to design certain products. One product let us have a talk about. In current electronics, you would be knowing that all electronics circuits, soldiering material is being based on lead. Lead based emulsions are being used, where lead metal is being used. Basically, uh, electronic circuit soldiering is done by uh, lead based emulsions. Uh, because lead has lower melting point. So, it moreover it has greater uh, elect, uh, better uh, electrical conductivity and fractures in the circuit does not occur. So, therefore, this is primarily being used. Now, because there are issues with lead, lead is harmful uh, uh, for humans because it is toxic in nature. So, therefore, because of the toxicity issues which emerges there, we need some re, uh, we need uh, uh, substitution of lead based material which can be used uh, as, a, as a soldiering material. We can also try combination of tin, silver, copper because we all know when we combine 2, 3 material then the properties changes and because of tin the melting point gets lowered, but there are issues of cost, there are issues of whiskers and fractures which occur in electronic circuits. So, therefore, this combination also would not work. Now, we need low melting point of metal, then only it can be used as soldering material. It, what it means? We can think of since nanoparticles, nanomaterial uh, uh, metals will have uh, inherently reduced melting or fusion temperature compared to bulk material. So, we can think of using nanomaterials as, uh, as soldering material and Lockheed Martin has developed a nanoparticle copper suspension that is being uh, marketed as uh, in the name quantum fuse that is used as soldiering material. So, the issue of uh, uh, lead based soldiering material that can be resolved in this way. Now, beyond this we can talk about uh, addition of carbon nanotubes. What is a carbon nanotube we would come over to it? You must be aware of a graphite. Which, which, is, which is well known as because carbon has uh, two different allotropes, one is diamond, one is graphite and in graphite there are sheets which are one over the other being placed and it makes three dimensional, uh, three dimensional structure of graphite. Now, we can think of having just one layer of that graphite as a film that is called graphene and if we fold it then it become a nano tube because its size of the sheet thickness of that sheet would be of the order of about 10 nanometers. So, therefore, when it folds it rolls up then it leads to single walled nano tube and it is hollow inside. So, therefore, there can be what happens now is with nano material. Now, we take in uh, nano materials actually acquire lesser melting point compared to bulk material we have just seen, we have discussed. In if we compare the bulk material the strength, the mechanical strength of nano materials is much more higher compared to bulk material. We can, we can understand this in just Lehman's words if we compare, if you just see if you have a stick if you break it into small pieces, then breaking the smaller pieces into further two small pieces is little difficult. And if you keep on breaking the smaller ones, it is difficult because you cannot apply the same amount of force now at a particular phase in order to bring about a bring about a uh, division. So now you can think of the same formula applies there in a bulk matter. 
the the force which you can apply on a particular phase that is concentrated on one particular phase and then you can bring about division but the fact of matter is at nanomaterial nanomaterial size at a particular phase where a force needs to be applied doesn't get exerted and therefore since it does not feel that force the division is not that easier with same amount of force which was used which can be used for division of bulk material so having said this it means mechanical strength of nanomaterials are much more greater compared to bulk materials so we can make use of this property for designing uh, materials which have greater mechanical strength where we use such materials we use we need to use such materials in automobile for example the the metal sheets out of which the automobile is carved needs to have greater mechanical strength in order it can pass the crash test so therefore basically the fact of matter is if the steel which we make use of to to design cars if while carving that uh, sheets of metal of steel we add carbon when we we can try adding we can do we can do add carbon nanotubes and we can increase its composition what is going to happen is because carbon nanotubes has greater mechanical strength so it will add to mechanical strength of the sheet metallic sheet out of which the car can be carved so then it can it means it will be made up of such a material which has greater mechanical strength and then it can help pass the crash test also one other advantage which such a material would have is nano materials would be having because carbon is uh, is 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 having lesser uh, lesser weight lesser, lesser mass compared to iron and therefore because of its lesser mass reduced mass the mass of the vehicle which can be made out of such steel which is composed of carbon nano materials nano tubes also would be much lesser would be lesser and therefore would help in increasing the fuel efficiency because these are days designing such uh, making such automobiles which have reduced mass and hence uh, uh and hence increased fuel efficiency is an important aspect which is required and the addition of such nano materials would help therefore two ways one it will increase mechanical strength other it will it will it will increase its fuel efficiency by controlling the weight of the vehicle being produced so having said this nano materials can be stronger lighter more Uh, durable water repellent anti reflective self cleaning ultraviolet infrared resistant there are so many properties electrically conducting also among other traits which you can make use of these properties designed to design such products and processes to be put to use by mankind so we can make use of advantage of these materials and we can design such products and processes so nanotechnology we can say is the design characterization production and application of structures devices and systems by controlling shape and size at nanometer scale so with this definition of nanotechnology now let us move towards the section called nanofabrication fabrication of nanomaterials chemical vapor deposition suppose we want to deposit a film nanometer thick size thick film on a glass sheet then we can make use a process called chemical vapor deposition we can uh, choose a material whose film we want to introduce on a surface and we can uh, bring it to the phase change phase state that is liquid state and we can heat it to bring about it in vapor state and we can allow such vapor to deposit at such film at such surface and then it will create a film of the material so in this manner uh, this process being called uh, chemical vapor deposition it can create uh, such nano uh, films beyond this dip and lithography is also a very advanced type of uh, process in this process the tip of an atomic force microscope afm is dipped into a chemical fluid which you want to 
whose nano material you want to design and then you can use that atomic force microscope to write on a surface like an old fashioned ink pen. You can think of a pen like it is just like a pen we, which we can make use of in order to write on a piece of paper. So, it is the atomic force microscope which can bring about beam of electron size beams and that beams will then will then flush the the liquid uh, substance on a particular surface and hence can create such objects which are of the nanometer size. So, this technique called dip pen lithography it can also be used to design such nano materials self assembly. Self assembly basically describes the process in which a group of components come together to form ordered structures without outside direction. We will talk about it in the form of an example. Now, let us uh, have a example of uh, fabrication of copper nano particles. In this what we need is we need two copper rods or sheets, we need a DC power supply with about 12 volt battery, we need two crocodile clips or similar wire connectors you can say, 250 milliliter of water distilled water is important to have distilled water, a beaker, a magnetic stirrer, ascorbic acid, ascorbic acid is vitamin C and uh, we can say just 1 gram means 5 tablets of vitamin C 50 mg each. Okay. Having said this, these are the materials, these are copper sheets, these are polystyrene space for electrodes to be hanged, this is DC power supply, this is, this is basically glass beaker or a cup you can say and this you can see is magnetic needle which is actually this beaker is placed on such an uh, such an apparatus called uh, called magnetic stirrer here a, a plate of uh, metal is been there in be, uh, besides which there is a magnetic field which is produced and uh, which creates a rotatory action for the magnetic needle which is present inside the system that you, that can be round bottom flask that can be beaker or so and hence uh, produces uh, stirring right so this is the kind of uh, setup which would be having what we would do is we will make a solution of uh, uh, of 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 our uh, material that is uh, we will hang two electrodes we will have distilled water we will hang two electrodes apart we will have uh, this water distilled water 250 milliliter in a beaker and then dc power supply will be connected and then as the current passes copper ions from one of the electrode goes to the solution gets trapped by the by the micellar structure of vitamin c it gets in trapped inside and would get reduced and would form copper metal and its size would be the about of the capping agent that would be in the nanometer size and hence it will look bright yellow it leads to the indication that is copper nanoparticles is formed with this we will shall have more discussion on designing nano materials for the time being we would say thank you very much on that note i would like to thank sir for this very interesting discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show stay tuned and keep watching thank you